What's up everyone, it's Darius, welcome to your first tutorial on uh, KiCad, making circuit boards designing. This is the KiCad website, um, it is pretty cool because uh, I, I compare it to Eagle, except the one thing KiCad can do that um, was difficult or not out of the box with Eagle was a 3D viewer for your circuit board after you design it. I mean that, that's pretty hot. That's um, not required or necessary for building circuit boards, but you gotta admit this is a pretty cool three-dimensional rendering. Alright, so I'm not going to show you how to like download and install it because that'll be different depending on your operating system. And I've got Ubuntu 16.04, um, still waiting for 18.04 upgrade to be available. Um, one of the things that I really like about KiCad is all of the hotkeys. Hotkeys are, um, they just allow you to do stuff with your keyboard buttons instead of clicking physical or instead of clicking digital buttons so if I want to create a new project I can do control N um, which I suppose will do you can either file new project or control N in this tutorial we're going to be talking about the schematic editor laying out all the symbols, the wires um, we'll do a simple board and then in videos to follow we'll go through the PCB layout check out the 3D viewer a little bit maybe hit on the schematic symbol editor and the PCB footprint editor I'm going to call this um, I'm going to make a type of transistor amplifier. Uh, let's just call it amp. Let's see, you create a new directory. Nice. We can see how that looks got it in the keycad folder oops actually it, that wasn't exactly what I wanted it to do I'm gonna move the amp into the keycad folder we'll do control O to open a project and it's the .pro file so it doesn't really matter where your project folders are stored you don't have to put them in under a folder named keycad or anything it's just you can open up the .pro file and that's your project it already created a PCB file and schematic but they're they're blank for, for now Let's go ahead and open up the schematic by double clicking on it. This is a schematic editor, so you can see our um, page and our frame. It's already there for us. I remember in Eagle, it, it was kind of a pain to have to add in the frame each time. Of course, you can change the frame. Um, I think it's the page settings. There's an A4. Maybe maybe we want a U.S. letter eight and a half by eleven because that's the kind of paper I use. So that was pretty straightforward. Most of the tools that you'll use um, are over here on the side on the right. Now there's also the um, 
library editor and that's useful for creating new parts and symbols that aren't standard so I've had to do this a number of times if you want to represent like a motor controller or something um, because remember schematic is all representation so you can place a component I'm gonna look for a transistor so at this point I clicked this place and now I have to click somewhere to go ahead and place it and we'll go with a 3904 the searching on here works pretty well you can see I didn't have to it doesn't have to um, start with 3904 as long as it has that in there this is just a small signal transistor we'll pop in a few resistors which is just R you can scroll to zoom so you could click again to place another component or if you hover and hit the letter C it will copy now if you're zoomed out you might have to clarify what you want to copy in this case it's the component but there we go so let's just do that again there's a separate button for like, power ground pins so we'll just stick one of those there see what they got well, let's go plus 15 volts I guess throw ground on. If you want to move components around you can hit the M button when you're hovering. That's pretty cool. I really like these hotkeys. I can kinda of keep my fingers all in the same place and not have to move my cursor off of my circuit and click buttons. I can just do it all. So this is just a common emitter amplifier that I'm starting to build. You don't have to worry about how it functions. Um, it's really just for demo, but I'll talk about it a little bit. Maybe you'll learn something. Or maybe you already know how it works. So I hit the W key to start a wire, and then you can hit W again where you want to put a corner. And then finally hit W on another terminal or node to complete the wire so W W works pretty well actually the grid makes everything snappy everything goes where you want it All right. So let's add some, maybe a few connectors, and then we'll be done. We'll do a one by two for power. I can copy some power pins and then use M to position them on my grid and then W to wire it in
I'm going to copy that uh, two pin connector because I want an output and an input. You can hit R to rotate 90 degrees. So in this case, imagine that you have a input signal and then ground, and you'll have an output signal and ground, and it will amplify the input signal by some gain factor. I'm not even putting decoupling capacitors or anything in there. since it's just for demonstration, you know. You can hit escape to jump from any tool back to the pointer. And with the pointer you can select a group and it's already gonna move it for you. I didn't have to hit M. It's already expecting that I wanna move. Just a few more wires, and I think I think I'm done here. Except I want to see what's going on with this um, extra junction. So I'll hit the delete key, delete that junction, and there might be something odd going on with these wires. So I'll just go ahead and delete the wires too with the delete key and rewire everything real quick. I like that. I like that. So now you could go in and set the values of your resistors um, by double clicking on it and clicking field value. Actually, there's there's a easier way. You can just hit V. We'll make this 10K. V 2.2K. We'll put a 1K in. There's really no need to set a value on your connectors or transistor or anything. So now what I want to do is tell it to annotate. So it says like J question mark, R question mark, but on the final schematic after it's been annotated, we'll have a J1 and a J2 and a J3. We'll have an R1, 2, 3, 4 and a Q1. But depending on your personal preference, you could number it from top to bottom. You could number them from left to right. And so we'll go ahead and click on Annotate Schematic. And if you're doing simple stuff, you can skip the first few options. Keep existing. You could, if you want to re-annotate everything, or if it's the first time, it probably doesn't matter whether, which one you do. So I'll say reset existing even though there's none existing. And then this is where you choose if you want it to annotate left to right or up and down. I like it left to right because I'll put my input on the left and my output on the right. And we'll just start with the first free number. And we'll annotate. Just a warning. And there we go. So we have R1, R2, R3, R4. That looks cool. And then the jumpers are annotated. All right, it'd be a good time to save. <clears throat> so, I guess I'll throw some theory in here. This is 
called a common emitter amplifier. Maybe I can put text on this. Common emitter amplifier. And that's because the emitter of this transistor is going to common or ground. Uh, the way this works, um, you have two resistors, R1 and R2, create a voltage divider of the input, 15 volts. And so this is going to be sitting around, I don't know, maybe 3, three volts or something that will be applied to the base. And that will allow just a tiny trickle current to flow and it will get the transistor into the active region so that any additional change of in voltage to pin 2, the base, will cause an immediate change in current flowing through R3 and R4. It will also mean it will be a different voltage dropped across R3 and R4 and the transistor and therefore a different voltage will be seen at the output and depending on the transistor and the values of these resistors, the amplification, the change in voltage here versus the change in voltage here will vary. In this particular circuit, uh, the bias voltage applied by this um, voltage divider is going to be 3.3 volts. And that allows um, 2.55 milliamps to flow down uh, through from collector to emitter. And overall, this thing has a gain of 3.3. It ends up being 3.3 over 1, or sorry, negative 3.3. It will invert the signal. All right, so if you put in uh, one volt, uh, one volt pulse on pin two here. You would get a 3.3 volt pulse, but negative on the output. Okay, so that's just a little bit of fun theory. I'm just doing this to teach you how to use a schematic editor, but I wanted to use a practical example, somewhat practical at least. Alright, well, we'll see you in the next um, tutorial, and we will talk about, um, I think we'll talk about putting together the PCB.